pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please take the roll. Okay, Mayor Jones. Here. Kill. Here. Bowen. Here. Walsiger. Here. Matson. Here. And Brenneman and Jass are absent with notice. All right. Do we have any additions or motions on the agenda? I make a motion to approve the agenda as set forth. Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. Walsiger. Yes. Matson. Yes. Keel. Yes. Bowen. Yes. And from the minutes from the 2 6 meeting? Make a motion to approve minutes from 2 6. I'll second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. Bowen? Yes. Steele? Yes. Matson? Yes. Lost lives. Uh, bills for payment are in your packet. Any action on that? Motion to approve bills as presented. Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. Wasslager. Yes. That's it. Yes. Peel. Yes. Bowen. Yes. All right. Public comment. Anybody that's not here for any other thing special, you guys are here for something special. I don't see anybody else. We will move into applications, agreements, hearings, special event permit presented by Downtown Hartford for the Farmers Market. Okay, I'll do. Make sure they know who we are. Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I said that. On behalf of Downtown Hartford, Inc. Um, okay. Sorry, I have to do it again. Yeah. Um, so, you guys have the information in front of you. This year is going to be similar as last. A little bit of different um, difference in your changing dates because we don't have. If we would have gotten the last Thursday of the month like we typically do, or, do, or no, the first yeah. Thursday, of the first month, Thursday, Thursday, yeah, first Thursday. <laughs> we, that, we would have gone over Fourth of July. We know that that's not a good day to do it. And then another one of our dates, we don't have half of our volunteer staff is not available, so we're shifting forward a week, so it will be the last Thursday of the month, May through September. So it's only a one week shift, but I think that it will be, um, it will be fine. And we, we will, in this request, it is asking to close from 2nd Street all the way down to um, no. Yeah. It is only once a month again, I know. I know that. You know, I was going to ask you. So. Yeah, we have a lot of requests to move it to yes. um, twice a month. Yeah. And as it is right now, we just don't have enough people to make that happen. And so we have been possibly <laughs> recruiting some, some more interested parties. And right. we'll see how that shapes out over the year, but um, maybe next year. We'll see. But for now, it's sticking to once a month. Um, what can we do to help you with that? To, to move it to twice No, a yeah, to help you recruit. Is there anything the city can do to help you with that? Unless you have a surplus of volunteers in your pocket <laughs> and you're just breaking down the door wow. to help out with it. If we were Typically, to do I don't have a surplus of volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> if we were to do it twice a month, how would that structure look? Would it be like, I mean, have you probably haven't thought a lot of it? Would it be like the first and third Thursday? Would you do like a one Saturday a month? And, or how would you? We would, well, so a lot of our vendors that we work with also work a lot of other markets. Yeah, and right. so they're either in the Falls Park Market, a lot of them do uh, Brandon, some do like the Rain, some are in other communities. Yeah. We actually just were in Brookings on Saturday and have a few vendors that are interested in coming down if if it's just the once a month. Yeah. Um, however, that doesn't mean that we can't have 20, 30 volunteers that are only coming once a month, or excuse me, um, vendors, but it's just alternating, you know, we could we could still p potentially do it twice a month if we had the support staff to make it happen. Gotcha. It just, it's the setup, it's the takedown, it's the cleanup. We, we try really hard to make sure that the street is cleaner than when we, when we set up. We wanna make sure that it's not a burden on the business owners or, or public works or any of that. We wanna, want to keep it a, a positive event for the community. It's just 
We need people. We need people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are, are there any new ideas about different activities or things to host that night that resource-wise or otherwise you just haven't been able to do anything like that? But, oh, you mean like, um, well, I, I feel like <coughs> with sponsorship and with we really improved things this last year by purchasing tables and yep. we purchased a canopy that we can now rent out to vendors we'd like to purchase maybe a couple more canopies to rent out because some of our vendors just don't have that <coughs> protection and it gets pretty hot on some of those days. Um, in terms of the events, um, some of the activities that we have brought in are quite pricey, like the 605 Art Plus, that was what close to six or eight. I think just, so, yeah. just for one day. So some of those things we'd like to maybe do more, but it is a little cost prohibitive. Um, we've only had one meeting, and so we want to ensure that these dates are a go before we continue reaching out to any vendors or start booking food trucks or any of that. Um, but we would like to try and expand some of our, our offerings as well. Um, one of the one of our um, one of our things for businesses that come and say, "Hey, I'd like to have an information booth." Is we want to keep it. Um, we want to add value, <laughs> and so for like a chiropractor, or someone to just set up a, a tent for information, we say, "Well, please provide at least a children's activity, so that it adds to the market yeah. rather than just having you know twenty information spots." Right. That, yep. You know, that kind of takes away from what we're trying to promote. So, yep. you know, if we can get more businesses that are interested in, you know, providing kids' activities, we can extend it in that way too, just for more fun things for families. Awesome. Yeah. No, it's, I, we're open to suggestions, though. Yeah. If you have some ideas you'd like us to right. implement. I would say we probably hear as many from a council or from my standpoint, as many positive comments about that mm -hmm. as anything we do. So. Oh, I thought you were going to say as many positive comments as negative. So. <laughs> 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 you said as much more. Much more positive. <laughs> no, that's great. That's how, that's, that's how we roll. <laughs> so that we can make it better. <laughs> I think it's, people really look forward to it all summer. And yeah. I think um, there's ways to grow it or sustain it. Especially good if I could work on that guy that owns the brewery who's going to make a beer for me. <laughs> you get that when you're done being a mayor. Oh, it's yeah. not how that works. <laughs> I can't say yeah. what he wants to call it on the camera. <laughs> He's giving me a potential name. I can't say it out loud. So, all right, I see you had three questions on here. Will the city please advertise the dates on the LED side? Done. Uh, can we bring a snowplow again for the snowplow? That's fine, right, Craig? Yep. The kids and loved that. Yeah. I yes. say that. They, I saw a drive by the other day when they were pushing snow. I was like, there's, there's a snowplow. <laughs> the adults also loved it. Because I, I ran that like section that day, and I had a lot of the adults went, can we do it? <laughs> yeah, that's really, that's really a nice idea. That's really a nice idea. And for right, trash cans, no problem. Right? We got blue cans, and we yeah. got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So those three extra ass were good. <laughs> All right, anything else, you guys? Yeah, guys and gals? Make a motion to approve the special, special event application for downtown Hartford Farmers Market. Second. Any more discussion or comments? Hearing none, we'll vote. Bowen? Yes. Keel? Yes. Madison? Yes. Wasson? Yes. All right. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep working Sorry. on those people. <laughs> <laughs> Hartford Dairy Fire and Rescue, the report is in the packet. What did we decide? He's coming once a uh, quarter. Feels like it's been a while. Maybe well, Connor, Someone else Connor was here. Connor oh, that's Connor right. That's right. In January. Yeah. I'll take him just right. So. He, had, he replaced Brian. Yeah. yeah. So. Sorry. Yep. No and economic development report. Amy Farr. Yeah, most of my information is in the packet for you. I do want to touch on the vendor commercial partnership that we have with them for the North um, Oaks Industrial Park. They did provide a flyer for us last Friday to review, so it was sent off to the board members. 
for some updates. Um, as soon as those corrections are made, they will list it on the website and have that readily available for interested parties to um, possibly secure some land options. So um, that is one of the main updates. Otherwise, if you have any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. What about the Kid Wilder land? Are they going to be listing that as well, I would imagine? Yep, that'll, that's a work in process though. So, so we're going through some wetland delineations on gotcha. that and other things that are needed. So you have to have all those wetland, all of those things kind of figured out before you can actually list it. Is that the caveat with that's listing That's what they it? would like to do so that you know what land is actually yeah. viable. For yeah, because I was on the, um, I was on the vendor web, you know, just checking up on it and I presume they'll probably have it hopefully listed this week. Mm -hmm. Is that their goal? That's the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. It just seems like it's been a while, but I know things take time, but it's like, there's a lot of land there, so let's yeah. get it listed. Absolutely. Um, if I want to go to the GOED conference, is that something that uh, I'd have That's to have these guys approve for to pay for me to go? Because I think it's what, Amy? Do you know? It's the it's April 10th and 11th. But what, how much? 165, I believe. Is it out days. here? No. No, it's in no, Sioux Falls. It's in Sioux Falls. Oh, oh. That's just, that's just, how do you do it? Right. Yeah, is that in the Senate Council? Yeah, right. I do, but shh, don't tell me. So is that something either I pay for it or I ask? The city usually pays for them, but we'll get it. I'll put it on the next agenda. Okay. Obviously. Yeah. I'll just register you. Yeah. I would like to probably attend that. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Amy? Any other questions for Amy? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, our newly minted uh, chamber director, Lynn. Well, not newly, this is your second. This is my second, second time. time. Man, you were almost. Uh, I'm almost a pro. You're almost old. Coming out of my rookie season. <laughs> Fire. My report is in the packet. Uh, updates are we had our annual banquet on Saturday. It was at the Suburban Lanes. It was uh, about 57 um, families or 57 people in attendance. Um, we gave our award to Burger Battle winner, which was uh, for Steakhouse. Parker Steakhouse yeah. Company. Skyler and Madison were there to receive that award. Uh, congratulations to Travis Electric for winning the business of the year. And Michelle Schilling um, won the volunteer of the year. So we awarded all those awards. Um, I, I thought it was a good evening. I, I enjoyed myself. I got to know a lot more of the chamber members that aren't on the board or whatever. So it was, it was an enjoyable evening for myself. Um, upcoming next is Discover Hartford, Hartford May 6th. Um, what is Discover Her? What is that again? It is an opportunity for the community to get to know about Hartford itself, about businesses in Hartford. We'll be doing some um, scavenger hunts and some videos and some things like that just to get the community involved. Hashtag Discover Hartford. I do know that there's a, they're having a showing for a big to do for this building here um, at the end that's for sale. Oh, um, for that month. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and that's in March. <coughs> we've got some advertising coming out that oh, she sweet. wanted to share that. So she's trying to make that a big deal, the new real estate agent. So, so they're gonna let people walk in there and check it out? I guess. I Call guess. On that. that sounds fun. gonna be a big thing. So, um, which building is that? The mud building. The big yeah. brick building. Yeah, Josh was, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's it. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is just a comment we can talk about it at a later time, but the chamber connection email needs yes. to be blowing up and started over. <laughs> yes. I don't know how else to say it. I need a little bit more. I, you know, I, I don't need more blunt. I don't, I don't need more blunt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't read it. So, yes, uh, the new one is coming out okay. on probably it's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, I, 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 in, the, in the new one, I'm asking for um, feedback. So, I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, but also looking for contributors. So, I'm okay. looking for trivia. I'm looking for. Mm. 
um, quotes. I'm looking for um, if you know of something that happened in the na er area that I could share for the week. I would love that. So um, y'all have my email. Send me some tidbits yep. about what's going on. How often does that go on? Is that a monthly? Weekly. It's a weekly. It's a weekly thing. Okay. So. I gotta, I, be, I gotta become a chamber years. member again to get back on that. Go to the chamber members. Yeah. Yeah. To the chamber members. Yeah. So you could get signed up for it since you're with Sanford. We could add you to that email list. Okay. Sure. Now I'd like to introduce our treasurer, um, oh, Keith Miller. Oh, that's why he's here. Uh, <laughs> I got roped into uh, going up and down the court. I only had nine kids, so I apologize for sweating <laughs> and for my attire. So. For me a few minutes later. Playing basketball. Yes. That's yes. right. And coaching. That's awesome. So, uh, coach. as you mentioned, what did you say? Player coach. Yeah, yeah, correct. Um, yeah, so as, as Wayne mentioned, I'm Keith Miller. Um, I'm in my second year as a treasurer with the chamber, third year um, as a board member. Um, and so today, I'm just uh, here to talk about um, the $20,000 that we had came to, I believe, was at the, your guys' budget meeting, um, kind of told you a little bit about why why we were asking for it, what that would be used for. Um, it's, it's a reduction uh, from what we asked for in years prior. Um, so just kind of recap, um, these dollars will go towards marketing events and along with the promotion of the city of Hartford as well as the businesses um, within our, our chamber. Um, and then another point of those funds was to continue to work towards the goal of us being self-sufficient. So, I don't know if there was anything else that you wanted me to add, or if you guys had any questions. I don't think so. I, well, I got a quick question. Yep, go I ahead. I two questions. Sorry, yep. I'm gonna, I've been talking all day, but, um, well, I, 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 um, I'm just I did add, you know, I, I did finish the sentence, so. Um, self-sufficient, actually, as you were saying that, I wrote that down, just a quick question. Because I love the golf event, and I know that it's probably the most expensive, right? I mean, well, it, it, we raised the price, um, that, and that was yeah. by me. Um, I golfed in probably five to six of those, and um, this is by, this was by far the cheapest one. I believe was it three hundred dollars? Yeah. And we for a it, team, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. We raised it to three seventy five yeah. this year. Um, we did have a few less teams. Um, some unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we kind of we had a, a good showing. Um, and that, I think that's one of the highlights of, uh, of the events, as you said, with the, with the downtown events that, that yeah. we put on. So, but so my, yeah, so, and, and I, because I love that event, and I think it's great. Um, my question on that, so when you do an event like that, obviously your main goal isn't to make money off of it. I mean, that's probably not the main goal. It's to get all the chamber members together and have fun and play golf. Um, so I think the biggest thing with that is how can you get that to run more, Pro I don't know if the word is profitable, but to where you would say you'd like it to be less profitable. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to. I guess what I would, my encouragement would be to recruit more teams, so it's not a bit, so it's not a huge money loser. Yeah, right. Yeah, which is great for everybody. I think did we have 19 teams this year? I think we had 24. I think we had 19 year this prior. year. Yep, and then um, on top of it, we added additional sponsorship levels. Yep, and some okay. other sponsorship opportunities that didn't create such a deficit. Great, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. if we could make it more like the Miley, that would be wonderful. Yeah, you know? that is crazy. Yeah. I mean, more, I think more marketing yeah. um, obviously will help. Um, and so yeah, it starts with, with all the chamber members and people who are part of it. You know, if you have anyone, any friends that have businesses that aren't a part of the chamber or are, are a part of the chamber that don't partake in that event, um, yeah, it'd be great to have more teams. It's nice not to be backed up on every hole. That is I true. Mean, I'm all about making it bigger. Yeah, yeah. No, it looks like they were over on the budgeted revenue and under on their expenses for the event. So. Yeah, yep. and yeah, part of that was because we last minute, we had already had, I know I, I was going to register and I was like, Amy, I think this is too cheap. And so we pivoted yeah. up, yeah, and moved it up. Because yeah, 375 isn't going to scare anyone away. Um, when you hit 500, that's where I'm a little Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. I did. Yeah. Cool. Well, right. I mean, if you get pulled pork, five hundred is not a lot. With you gotta have pulled pork. pork. I mean, there's a, there's normally a cake there. Yeah. And, and sauce. Yeah. And that's sponsored and by sauce. a wonderful yeah. chamber member. Uh, yeah. Coleslaw. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So you start punching that out. I think right. my my question was on the budget, and it's twenty thousand, and I know we could use a certain fund that 
third penny sales tax. Yes, money. Restricted yeah. anyway, so I'm yeah. not complaining about that. I do know I did notice you have quite a bit. Um, yeah, if you look at in money from, market, if and you look at from your prior, where I mean we're in a completely different position than where we were. Um, hopefully, the, the next year, you know, the ask is is less. You know, if if we continue to do what we did this year, it, who knows? You know, we might not be here asking for you. We we just don't know. Um, but that's why we felt like, hey, instead of just completely cutting it off, we'd reduce our ask, you know, just in case. Um, and when we made this ask, um, we also didn't know exactly what was happening with, with our chamber director position. Um, we still feel like it's a, it's a reasonable ask. So. And honestly, that's the kind of thing we have to spend that third penny on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. We can ask for more. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be as short as I were on, was on the newsletter. Yeah. 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 So. I think if you can show the value. Yeah, the businesses in this community <laughs> have shown time after time that they're always willing to give to a good cause. And, mm -hmm. yep. um, you know, if somebody suggests that they should increase the yearly cost of membership in the chamber and win business of the year next year, then it's probably worth it. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we, did, we did increase our dues as well. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of that is reflective on the model. Without vacation, too much like it. Yeah, we haven't had any of our big expense events yet, and we <coughs> pivoted something different with our annual chamber event, which used to be a loss. Um, and so this year, I don't know the, the final if it was a, a money maker or a loss, and, but it's not going to be as big of a loss of what we did years prior. Um, we've heard some feedback that people, you know, everyone wants it to be in um, in in Hartford, but you know we need a spot to have it in Hartford. We, the uh, Great Life is a chamber member, everyone that catered is a chamber member, so everything was yeah. chamber member um, centric. But um, but yeah, who knows, maybe next year we'll go to a, an annual event um, like we did before. I, I, was sit just, down dinner, but. I was just curious a little bit with the money, what you're holding in your money market, and um, like a pretty good balance sheet if you guys are working towards something or well I mean I think the the plan was it five years ago was to be self-sufficient and we're we're not quite there when we met six months ago our balance sheet didn't look like this and we were um, we increased membership dues you know we cut up uh, an event that normally cost us some money um, but so it'll look a little bit different in a few months when we start spending some money on on all of our summer events it's just kind of a, a that time of year for us. Um, haven't had a lot of mixers, you know, haven't had a lot of mixers at my last. I would say, say by the time we get to budget in August, these guys will have a different perspective. When will have some months on their belt? I, I probably have less heartburn about the 20000 I mean, yeah. obviously supporting the director's salary right. was a big a, a move too, right. but um, yeah. just so, curious. No, but I, I do think that the discussion has to keep rolling toward when will we let these guys be at a point where we say you're on your own? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the that's the goal. So I like the fact that they're. Uh, I think Keith and Keith has done a great job of being prudent with their cash. And Keith, are you banking? <laughs> Someone <laughs> said, "Hold on." Someone said. All right. We have any action on this uh, proposal? I make a motion to um, approve the release of the 2024 budget allocation of $20,000 for the Hartford Area Chamber of Commerce. All right, I'll second. Any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. Bowen? Yes. Keel? Yes. Madsen? Yes. Waslager? Yes. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now you can go back and play basketball again. Or take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> take a shower. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. City Engineer Report. Mr. Michael. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my report is in your packet. Uh, since last meeting, we've reviewed a, a plot and recommended approval on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, continue to review the design standards, subdivision ordinances, and specifications. I uh, target in March to review those with city staff uh, and then present that to the Planning and Zoning Board and ultimately you. 
Uh, and then last, we met with the Windsor Group earlier today just to discuss the preliminary plan uh, and their timeline just to make sure it matches with the sewer project. Um, moving on to project updates, uh, water resource recovery facility, that one really is just walls at the lift station, or walls at the treatment site at this time. Um, they're looking at 46 different, they have 46 different sections to do, um, and they're planning on two sections a week, call it, so it's a 23 week process. I currently have eight done, so they're making progress, the weather's helping, but it's just gonna take a little bit of time. Um, looking ahead at the operations building, uh, looking to do footings and foundations on that um, March and April, if, weather hold, if the weather holds, uh, and I'm looking to get that, those precast walls erected by June. Um, continuing project updates on the website as well, um, link active, uh, I think photos will be coming soon, um, last ones are from last month, but just continuing to keep that updated. Um, any, if you guys have any comments on what you'd like to see there, happy to hear it. Um, moving on to the bike and rec trail, that one, uh, have, we do have a tentative approval from, from FEMA, just have to notify residents of the changes to the floodplain, which really is a no-rise. Um, but it's just part of their approval process. So before we can get that form we're approved and finalized, we just need to notify the residents. So we're working with the city staff and then we'll wrap up plans and get those on the shelf. Um, and then the last one is the Western Avenue interchange approach. Uh, we did wrap up uh, construction documents, specifications, and uh, cost estimate. Uh, and those have been submitted to the South Dakota Department of Transportation today for federal highway review. Um, they did push the schedule back a little bit, so instead of bidding in June this year, uh, plans will be submitted for bidding in June, but the actual bid letting will not be until this fall. Will that push the actual project into a different year? No, the construction is already planned to start next spring 2025, so I think they're just pushing the bidding back for either for additional review time, um, for further bids, it's not to say with the so I was asked a question about, so that's going to be curb and gutter, sidewalk, <coughs> street lights, all the way around. So like an approach into the plaza where they have their own kind of frontage road, how does that work? So Dairy Queen is going to make, they're going to do driveway in the same spot, but then that is that is what the access will be. Or are you asking during construction? Yeah, well, I'm just, no, I'm just curious of how that, so that ditch and everything, does that go away or how does that work? The, lo the road is getting lowered mm -hmm. slightly, so we're using some of those spoils from the road to kind of fill the ditch, and okay. then there will be storm sewer to convey. Okay, and there's gonna be a sidewalk? Yeah. Yeah, there's gonna be sidewalk along there. The west side will have a five foot wide sidewalk, and then the east side will have a 10 foot wide trail. Yeah. Uh, DOT, as part of their interchange product, they have, they have right. the same setup with the sidewalk on the west and the trail on the east. So, I am in favor of it, but I, I was, right. I'm glad to hear like, I'm just curious how that, you know, because you put the storm sewer in there, you put sidewalks and curb and gutter, and we're going to three lanes. So, kind of going to be right up to their, what I would call their <laughs> parking lot, right? Yep. That a, I, safe. I believe there's 10 or 15 feet between the edge of their, their okay, and, still. And, and, and the sidewalk, our curb and gutter. So the sidewalk okay. can take a portion of that. Okay. I can get, I can I'll just, I'm just light, curious. But, Somebody asked me, they said, well, when this, you ever going to put street lights along there? And I said, hold your powder dry. We'll get the street lights in there, but it's going to be a while. So. You writing that down, Chuck? Street hold your powder dry. Hold your powder dry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard it. We got a lot of them tonight. No, you do. Yeah. All right. Anything else you need to add on that? No, that's all I have. No, sir. More questions. Anybody else got any questions? <laughs> so, since the weather's been so nice, the sewer plant's going to probably be ready by March. <laughs> I, I think I think it's important to get those sidewalks out there, especially with all the multifamily housing. Right. Yeah. that we have and people walking um, with the other businesses out there. So yes. yeah. I don't know how we have a lot to do. Every street and road project is that sidewalks and grass. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or we're coming back trying to get safe across the school money.
others. Right. Yep. Yeah, we got to do them right now when we build it. Yeah, exactly. Is All right. There, is there a way when we're doing that, it's like last year with Grand Angel, trying to convince people to sign up? Sure. And people are still saying no. Is there a way that we can yep. make yep. them? There is. Yeah. T, T did it, right? Where they pretty much. Because it's included in the project. The trouble mm -hmm. we ran into last year was we wanted to put sidewalk on their property. Yeah. We can't even right away. We can put them in right away and, and mm -hmm. sell some. Yeah. And yeah. You're right. The team easy, mandated though. it a few years so, ago. But it's just. When you're going on to their property. Yeah. And uh, I have. We've talked some about my initiative. Mm -hmm. These guys yeah, did a great map and I got it. Mm -hmm. And I've made some notes and there's some stuff we're going to talk about. But some of the areas that we've got marked where there's no sidewalks, the biggest problem is there's going to be, have to be a half dozen old growth trees some of these places. I mean, you're going to have to weigh what do you want to do. If we're going to put sidewalks in, there's going to have, something else is going to have to go in some of those areas. But I agree. I mean, but. Which things do. Yeah. There's things they can look at. I mean, quite a few years ago, the city did a program where we gave a rebate if people would right. put in sidewalk on their yeah. own. We like, I think it came out to about fifty percent of it we paid for. You know. So, right. I mean, there's different things yep. they can look at. I agree. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. We'll move to Mr. Craig. He's got a lot of stuff for us today. Yeah. <laughs> Well, most of it, like I said in the, in the report, everything's pretty much the same. A uh, couple changes. Uh, Jim did pass his uh, wastewater collection uh, class one. I just got the results back today on that, so he passed that, so we'll keep him moving on other <coughs> tests and exams. Good. Uh, and the parts of the slide for the pool are done, so we'll be starting to put that together here these nice days. So we, gotta, we wanted to let the paint cure for about another week before we start really monkeying with it. So once yeah. weather stays, next week we'll probably get started on that. That's all I really had in my report. Any questions why not? I don't think so. Well, I was out camping to see my ward. Um, street lights came up. Um, at the end of the Central Valley driveway, there used to be a yard light there in that general area. I think or maybe it was at the end of the, of the um, townhouses. And apparently, it had gone out burned out and one of the homeowners in the sixplex inquired with Sioux Valley about replacing it and they just instead cut it off. And I assume, I, like I told her, I said I think that was probably due to that's on private property, yep. it's probably being paid for by Great Life and they said we don't need it, we've got a brand new parking lot lights. I'm sure that's what the call, it, but it wouldn't have been private. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. And then the second location was at the end of the Colton Road and Highway 38 where the bike trail is. There's a streetlight across the way, but in the morning that that is extremely dark where pedestrians mm -hmm. might actually be. So while it's across the way, it doesn't afford any safety for those folks that are on the bike trail. Okay. Yep. That's <clears throat> probably have to talk to DOT or the county on that, so I can certainly look at it. And sure. You're talking where those two bike, the Colton Road, two bike trails, bike trail, yep. on each side. Bike trail pulls up to the Colton Road across the Colton yeah. Road. If you're coming down that in the morning, yep. um, so, somewhat the light across the way distracts your attention away from um, being able to see mm -hmm. those pedestrians. Yep. And so clear. Um, if, if there was a light on, on one or both sides, both sides might be a bit much, but at least on one side, uh, it would afford more. Visibility. Visibility for yeah. those folks that are using that bike trail. Definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> I can check with the <clears throat> DOT on that because more likely it's going to be there right away because sure. they're going to have like, I think right. like 120 foot in there. Yeah. So it'd, be, it'd have to be in there right away. So sure. I can check, yeah. check with them guys and see if there's any possibility to get something in there. I think those are the only, yeah, those are only two things that I can think of. All right. Mm -hmm. You have an action item in here for your tractor more. You want to talk <clears throat> about that a little bit? Yeah, so we put numbers together. Um, on, Kubota, Case, New Holland, and John Deere. Um, we spec them all out. Uh, the only difference was that uh, Case's, that 75A, that, that 71,000, that was a three cylinder, a um, little bit less horsepower um, than the other ones. So the guys went today and they test drove 
we threw the John Deere out, they test drove the New Holland, the Kubota, and the case, they test drove the 75C case, which uh, on source well would have came over 81,000. So we kind of threw that out. Um, the guys thought the New Holland was a really nice uh, mower, uh, tractor mower, um, and actually New Holland and case are kind of together. Yeah. Um, after they did that, and that would have been my recommendations with New Holland, I found out today that the case has got uh, that 75A, they, that three cylinder one, they didn't have that in, but supposedly it's coming overseas and should be here in a couple weeks, which most of the tractors are made overseas now, they just carry the parts here. Um, but I think if, if the 75A with a three cylinder, if New Holland would have a three cylinder, there'd be less yet. So, like I said earlier today, my recommendation was the New Holland's that for the 73,075 dollars, that's with the mower and the sickle, or the sickle and the tractor. Um, but I can certainly look into a little bit more on that uh, that three cylinder and see if Case and New Holland both have it. So, well, two things: we want you to have what is going to work for your guys, but also we want to be prudent with the money. So, mm -hmm. if a couple weeks to take a look at that. Yep. I mean, you're not going to start mowing and. No, it'll be sometime. Well, unless the weather stays the way it is. So, yeah, I can certainly. And the other thing is with Case that the uh, guys told me today when they were there, um, their, <clears throat> their mower, they didn't know how far out it would be to get a mower built or where they could find one at. So, okay. <clears throat> that's another thing we had to put out. So, right. definitely we can put this on hold. Um, I'll do a little more. I'll get involved myself a little more on that 75A and then also New Holland and see what they've got for a three okay. cylinder and see what the good the bad is with it. Uh, they did, Case did say that the overall retail value would be better on that four cylinder than the three cylinder. Um, but as far as horsepower, they're pretty similar, a few horsepower different to them. But I'll do some more checking, plus I want to check on the availability of that more. If it's, right. if it's six months, eight months out, then it doesn't do us any good. Right. Right. So I definitely am fine putting us on a hotel. A couple weeks or Yeah, it'll probably be a four, it'll probably be the second, not this next yep. meeting, but the meeting after, because I'm going to be on vacation that meeting, so. Okay. Got to go, I got to use it either. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So. And that's all I have, so. We don't need to take any action, because we really didn't ask it. Right, this is ready money, so we don't have to. We'll put it on the future agenda. Right. Yeah. All right. Any questions for Craig? I've got a lot of lot of questions, but I'll I'll wait till it's on the back on the agenda. I just I think um, there was obviously quite a bit of discussion during budget time of this. What's the? It's a lot of money. I understand the city has needs. We have to take care of what we have. So what's the selling point? I guess the, the how do we justify the cost? Because in my mind, it's a lot of money, right? So when I look at a product like something like that, I'm like, you know, that, that's a little bit harder. Like I have to really comprehend that and, and be able to explain to my constituents of why we're spending eighty thousand. And so I know we, I know that we think we need it, but do we actually need it? It's kind of my, my question. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the more we got now, it does have a sickle on it, but it's. And the so sickle obsolete. is like the it hangs the off to the side. So, yeah. so like this type of mower, uh, you will run the uh, bags and that stuff with the crick, yeah. and they'll reach out there and get that mowed up, keep it clean instead of weed whipping that all. Um, plus, with the lagoons or the sewer plant, we'll have to be mowing out there. Um, in the meantime, with the lagoons, we'll be using out there to mow that. Uh, some road ditches that we because like that tractor with the sickle, that's like an old tractor, right? I'm trying to picture. Our old yeah. one is, yeah, it's like so, a '70s yeah. or something. Yeah. Like that. So you'd have an issue. You'd have an issue driving it out there, probably, right? I mean, I don't, probably, think, you, I don't think you'd want to go that far with it. We, <laughs> we had a pretty extensive discussion, I think, at budget time when we put in there about why. I understand that, and I and I was pretty much. I think I voted no on this subject. So <laughs> I know it was extensive, yeah. and I, I would but just I, say, Craig, make sure you pick what engine you want. I agree. Because it's going to be yours for a long time to get what you want. Yeah, and we're only using it during mowing season. It's an $80,000 piece of equipment, so it'd be nice. And I, I don't know anything about equipment, so I'm coming. But volunteers are hard to come by, especially to run a weed whacker. <laughs> it's going to have a loader on it. So, like, going out to the fields, if we have to bring anchor line out yep. there, right now we throw a little bit in the back of the gator, bring it out there, and shovel it in. 
because <clears throat> you can't bring a skid steer out in that good grass. You'll right. tear it all up. Yeah. So this you one probably can't use this to mow out there with big yeah. tires and stuff. I yeah. imagine. But this you'd be able to drive out to the um, angry line to the fields and dump it without doing damage to anything else. Okay. <clears throat> so we would be using it for that too. So that was okay. at first I thought about eliminating the bucket on it, and then I got more. We got talking about it. It's like, yeah, we should probably really keep the bucket on it. So. Yeah. Okay. If you if you approach it from a a business sense, like <clears throat> yeah, it's eighty thousand dollars, but it's it's also not fifty years old, and so the safety features I got to believe that are on this new piece of equipment. In the event something should happen, um, Might be a little better there's probably a lot. There's probably <laughs> there's probably a lot more liability sticking somebody on a fifty year old piece of frame than they do on a. And it should increase old. your production or your. Well, yeah. Sure. yeah. So you're saving on labor with people weed whacking and, and versus it. Yep. yep. And you can actually, I know I had it a complaint at least twice about some of the areas where we're not getting down <coughs> along the along the creek and the other drainage area that we're somehow responsible yep. for between <coughs> houses. Mm -hmm. um, people don't like those growing up behind their houses oh, on right. city property. When you then explain why we have weeds yeah. that height and they can't. And even though we're still not, might not get into there even with this tractor because if it's wet, it's wet. Mm -hmm. and you still yeah. have to go back in there and weed with. Zone's different. So. Different zoning. You can have taller weeds if you have different zoning. That is true. That is true. That works for me. It's all different. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good one. All right. John, anything I'm else? Good. I'm good. good. Thank you. All right. Uh, Karen is out. She had a death in her family, as Teresa put in her update. This is her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law. Mother yep. <clears throat> yep. So we give her condolences, and I think you guys probably took care of sending yep. some father to her. Yep. I'm sure did. And her information's in here. She'll be back in the office on Friday. All right. Then we will move forward to your report, Teresa. Um. Of course, on the packet, not too much for updates. Um, just want to point out, you know, we had a okay getting life insurance. I did meet with that rep on Friday, so we've got that ball rolling. So it um, looks like April 1st we can get that effective and, and going here for the um, staff. Um, they're also going to offer, they have an, another policy where kind of can piggyback on it. The city would pay for that 10000 like we agreed upon. And if any of the staff who wants to get an additional 75000 they can get that at a guarantee. So that's something we'll talk about, we'll have a staff meeting talk about it, and then they can go for that. But that's all in the works. Um, I have got a message in to Greg Olson. We're trying to find a, a date to meet to kind of talk about the sponsorship of what kind of signage they want, like we're talking about. So we haven't landed on a date yet. As soon as we do, we'll meet and discuss that and kind of keep you updated on that. Um, and just really the other thing, I just want to let you know, the, the District 3 meeting this year, unfortunately, falls on a council meeting day. So, um, unless you guys want to move a council meeting, we'll, you know, won't be able to go there. Um, at the district meeting, what they do is the states divide up into like nine districts. And so our, our kind of section of it, basically, they give you a, a, a meal and some, some, one of the cities host it, they give you a meal. Uh, the good thing about it is they kind of give you a legislative update as this is after the legislative sessions, kind of tells you how it's affected, what changes have made that affect the cities or whatnot, but they always send out a, an email about that as well. So, I mean, we'll get the information, just letting you know that. So, I really don't have too much else right. unless you guys have questions. I appreciate the email you sent out with uh, the municipal league. Yeah, every week that. they're That's keeping us good, updated. Good information. Um, they are watching that Senate Bill 201 yeah. that um, I've heard, you know, I've heard both sides of that. of that from people. <laughs> yeah. well, I have two uh, going out getting signatures. What's yeah. going on this gas line? What carpet yeah. have come mm -hmm. up? Yeah. Like, uh, pay attention. Pay attention yeah. to what's happening in here. Yep, so we'll try to keep yeah. you updated on that as well. It, I can, I know that there, it's going to get contentious when it gets to the house. From everything that uh, Senator Hoffman told me, they they don't think that the house is going to pass it, but maybe they'll come up with some sort of wording and have to have a, a compromise. I gotta believe at some point that. that I they're going to have a harder time stopping this thing. But 
I ran into Scott Anderson with the county planning and zoning, and they're watching this as well closely oh, too, because yeah. it's really going to affect a lot in the county because that's where a lot of the pipelines are running. Right. So right. they're not in favor either of uh, the state kind of taking over jurisdiction as right. far as it goes for that. Yeah. So. All right, any questions for Teresa? Hearing none, we'll keep moving forward. Next on old business, mayoral appointment for the Park and Rec Board. I would like uh, approval by the council to appoint Tim Weber to the Park and Rec Board for, those are two or three? Three year. Three year. Three year terms. Tim, if you don't know, is a local West Central kid, uh, works at Reliant Bank, helps with the wrestling program, lives in what I call the balloon house, you know, the one that they lifted up and put the thing under and had balloons on top of the so. Uh, motion to approve the appointment of Tim Weber to the Park and Rec Board. Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. Wasslager. Yes. That's it. Yes. Keel. Yes. Bowling. Thank yes. you. And you'll get in touch with them, Teresa. Yep. yep. All right. New business. We have <laughs> some items under new. Re review. Approve the surplus list. Motion to approve the surplus list as presented. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Are we going to replace the Mary? That Mary ground is rough. That's it's already out, you guys. It's, it's been now. replaced. It is. We got it's been replaced? Last year? Last fall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm already that. We're already on top of it. Okay. <laughs> we, Great. Yeah. Be able to it looks just different. like the other one. Does it really? We went with an old school one. Oh, so you did. That, one, that, that one's rough. I mean, they're both. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one's All right. right. Okay. <laughs> Good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go oh, ahead. Well, that's an antique. Oh yeah. <laughs> Somebody will buy it. Some 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 old collector will throw that. No, we're it throwing it. it. Yeah. Oh, we're throwing it. It's going to scrap your. It's it's been been it a lot, there's a lot of liability. Insurance won't. <laughs> it's been welded up so many times. <laughs> yeah, I, I, my kids, I'm sure, wore some of that out. <laughs> if you've ever been by the park when there's ten kids oh, on that thing no. bouncing and turning, and I always thought, how is that thing staying together? All right. Hearing no discussion, we'll vote. Wasslager. Yes. Matson. Yes. Keel. Yes. Bowen. Yes. All right. Next up, review, discuss the pay payroll manual, right? Or personnel manual. Basically, actually. our yeah. employee payroll personnel manual. So you know, we um, contracted with the West End Group, which is an HR service, to review our current manual and then. Um, suggest any changes or additions to it so I just want to review it kind of tonight and set a vote on it because there's a lot of information on there um, I have looked through it all and um, read it a few times um, it basically incorporates what we currently have into our payroll manual so it's <coughs> personnel slash payroll manual um, it has the same contents like I said as we currently have as far as you know benefits and regulations or whatnot but the Western Group really kind of beefed it up and added quite a few additional sections to it. I kind of gave you um, a breakdown of what went through each section, what they added, what they kept the same, what they kind of changed wording on a little bit. And there's about four or five sections um, that shown in red that I, I want to just have some discussion on that they've added that do we want, do we not want, do we want to change it or whatnot? So um, I'd like to go through them first, and then if you guys have any questions about any other parts that you think we need to take a look at. For the most part, what they added, I think, is good additions, but like I said, I just have some questions on the ones that I have in red. All right. So as we go through them, so section one, to me, looks all fine. They added a few things. Um, don't have any issues of what they added there. Section two though, kind of the first section they have is um, on confidentiality. Um, that section basically talks about um, having an employee sign a confidentiality agreement. We currently don't do that. Um, not to say we can't, I don't think it's probably not a bad idea. There is some state statutes out there that, are, that we're under that make information that we get here through the city confidential but having them sign a confidentiality agreement just might kind of beef that up. So I wanted basically your input on that. Of yes, no, uh, 
just kind of want some discussion on that. I would say definitely not for, in my opinion, for seasonal part-time labor, labor, in my opinion. Yeah, because that's it. Now we got to define who, who signs up all. I, so right now it's just you and Karen are, well, no, you're not. No, that's I'm on the background check. That's Never the next mind. section. Yep, that's yeah. the next section. Never mind. I just, you know, it's, it's kind of close to home for me. So when I see the title of the paragraph and then I read the paragraph, it doesn't really talk about one single little thing about it. compliance. So I'm not sure why it says that. But then also, like, we're not subject to HIPAA as the city. So I'm also not sure about that. No, like the, this was a section so, by the Western group. I, I think you should ask them to take another look at that specific too. Would it, would it be more along the lines of, I know so and so lives at such and such and this is their phone number? It's not HIPAA. No, it's, not. No, it's confidentiality though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So back to the confidentiality agreement. What yeah, you're I'm saying, sure. Cindy, is to look at this carbon. This doesn't make sense. And yeah. should, we're, it says we're going to train our employees on HIPAA privacy oh. and security. And yeah, we're not going to do that. That pertain to us. We're not going to do that. Right. So that needs to be fixed for a city. So you're recommending carve that down, look more just at the confidentiality I, piece? I think it, the Western Group ought to scope it to city. Not yeah. just not yeah. yeah, a lot of times put it 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 kind of, okay. it's more like you're looking at a business versus Correct. a municipality. Right. Well, I mean I mean they start off by telling you we're gonna do something we know we're not gonna do. Right. Right. And, uh, that that is a compliance program conducting internal auditing and monitoring. We, we you don't have any of that. I mean, there's a lot in here, like weapons in a workplace. Like here's the thing, we live in a you know, we live in a right. state where we like our guns. Um, you know, I, I have no issue with a city employee carrying a gun in order to protect themselves. So like that, like I, I wouldn't vote that if somebody felt comfortable concealed carrying a weapon in a state that's very pro Second Amendment, I would never force, like if I owned a business, I would never put that in play. I mean, so like, I mean, there, there, there's a lot, on, I mean, I, I, I look at this and I'm like, I probably have to go through this a lot more thorough than what I did because I don't want to agree I'm to something. The, I'm in the same boat. I mean, well, I that's why I just want to review yeah. and have some discussion. That's why I didn't want any action on this. Okay, gotcha. I, that, that's good. I, yeah. I, I, I have I no action on this tonight. If, would it be appropriate to have confidentiality agreements assigned by management employees? Would that right. get Craig and Amy and Wynn? I think if we're going to have confidentiality agreement signed, I think all full-time people should probably sign it because Rhonda has access to everybody's yeah. address, yeah. there's social security numbers, there's one else, so does Jenny, she has access to that. Uh, um, we, like I said, there is a South Dakota state statute, we have passed the red, right flag mm -hmm. rules, which basically say we can't give out that Correct. information, so we don't. So like I said, we are covered about I mean, under some state stuff, so I know is this a little extra level? I don't know. A mint for this? To be done but that's what this should say it should say you know that employees will maintain confidentiality requirements as required in whatever, whatever state law that is yeah. and, the, and that's what they should be signing and then i got a question i mean can i ask any other questions okay mayor is this down the road away down oh uh, are we still in section two yes yeah. okay yeah. sorry I will, uh, I, I realize I've been skipping. <laughs> this is how I look at it. Yeah, you went right to Johns, and I don't even know where that's at. So. Yeah, I must have way down, sorry. Yeah. Um, that's all right. I no, will hold. it's one of the areas she looked it up. But. Yeah, the solicit, uh, solicitation and dis distribution. Um, so you gave an example on here, so. It's okay if we take each section at a time. <laughs> Are we in, we're in section two though, right? Well, Are we in section well, one? Oh, uh, it's so, confidentiality. So does anybody oh, have any more input on gotcha. that? I just want to just so I have clear notes. <laughs> and, yeah, and I, I understand you're saying I totally agree. So I, I think this should be revamped. I, I don't um, want to write it. I'm not an expert about the laws the city has to comply with for its employees, but I'm happy to give some input in it. Okay, so we'll look at rewriting that section. Okay. Okay, so the next section is about background checks, and that's, like I said, we, we don't do them now. We, um, me and Karen are bonded, and part of the bonding process is we've had background checks done on us. Is this something we want to do for 
when we hire people. Yes. I mean, obviously there is a yes. cost associated. So okay, that's it's what not, I want to It's not a large cost, but I've ever been I, I think it's somewhere between fifteen and hundred, depending on what company. It's it's not you a go, large. You can go like fifty states, and but I mean, I think I checked all the boxes one time. It was like one hundred sixty bucks, but most of the time it's around eighty. Okay, that's what I was when I looked online. That's what it kind of. Are you like talking about 15. for all employees? So then that's the question. Year round, is it just all full time year round, or so you want them all for even the seasonal and part time? For or sure, park coordinator, high school kid, high school. For sure, like if they're going to be driving. And we off. hire them every year, so we you know hire additional twenty so here's, people every year. I'll give year. you an example. For whatever reason, interview this guy. Interviews well. Google doesn't doesn't come up. Somebody mentions to me, gosh, that guy's name sounds really familiar. Did you do a background check on him? No, I didn't. Well, look into this robbery out in Rapid City. As soon as I added like robbery. Rapid and rapid oh rapid. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Rapid City. Oh yeah. You guys serve time. And so while well, our best, you know, it was it was well done, it was well in the past, but I would have utilized that employee in a different role. So those little things can come up. Now, with a minor, I guess, I don't know all the rules for background checks. For I, minors, I think you have to have their parents sign off. Uh, on that, that's, that's a little different, but that's a little, yeah. I was thinking like, anytime someone could enter a person's home, specifically, yeah. those employees are the ones that I would be most concerned about. Mm -hmm. Public works. Yeah, Public works. Yeah, yeah, the part-time guys would never whether Tom can help us then or the contractor, but there'll be some, you know, um, work around getting consent for the background check and all of that, that will impact the hiring. Yeah, yeah there's gonna have to be, uh, okay. So that'll, that'll be a little bit more slow down, I would say, is my A little bit more time to bring somebody yeah. on board. Uh, the only, it will. It will. but you know, if you have a part-time seasonal guy, or what? I mean, usually they're high school kids, but I guess you'd want to know if they had DUIs. But I suppose you take their driver's license, you have to submit that. We do insurance. motor vehicle checks. You do, okay. On anybody that drives a, a city right. vehicle. Okay. So we do that every year. Okay. So we, we find out that information because that's needed for insurance. Why not? So yeah, so the question, yeah, I, I don't disagree that background checks aren't probably a good thing to do. My question, I guess, there is, do we do them for our part-time seasonal people? And, and, and you, I, I know think you're thinking yes. I think you'd want them at the pool. Yeah. Well, you got, you got people. I'm just saying. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I mean, relatively speaking, it's probably the best 80 bucks you could spend. I think, yeah, that'll be a process too to just figure out what we get and what the cost is and how extensive it is. That'll probably be a million options. Because they'll can, be federal, they'll be state, they'll be. And I can check with Tom about the regulations with minors because, like you said, <coughs> most of our seasonal yeah. are high school kids, minors, or whatnot. So sounds like an agreement is a good idea, but we yeah. need a lot of Plus, yeah, just need to know a little, more, little yeah. more specific there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then the same check. Here's where we get to social well, that's not, and distribution. Oh yes, yeah, so we're on that one. Okay. So this I'm is. I'm jumping all over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is if they wanted to. Um, and they got a side business and wanted to hand out flyers and propaganda about something. Or it does say if you're asking somebody to contribute to another entity. So immediately my mind went to, hey, somebody's kid comes in there and sells Girl Scout cookies. You know, we're contributing to that. Or they're selling for a band trip or whatnot. And, and we've all had that done. And I don't think we've had any issues or problems with it. But this would restrict it so they can't do that, that we couldn't have anybody in here soliciting employee to the employees. Now, if the employee's, Our employees, kid, yeah, if employee. the employee's kid shows up selling Girl Scout cookies and just on their own because they're familiar with the people working here, yeah. that's a so, different, I'd say that's different. You, you I don't think we've ever had just a kid come in by themselves without their parent. <laughs> I, I would agree. But given that scenario, I mean, yeah, the employee I mean, could. couldn't solicit, yeah. but if, they, if the kid showed up, yeah, that's, that's different. That's different. I, I mean, I'm just trying to think like. So yeah, so I'm just. Oh, I, I, I don't want these discussions. You know, oh, we kind of get. Yeah. It's not a fun thing sometimes, but honestly, we find mostly people like it because it's a hassle if you have a stream of, or there's pressure to buy. 
you know, or there's whatever. So I don't think it's the worst thing. It's not like there's 50 people in here they're missing out on. They can ask you all after work. That's my two cents. So you need some money once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you gotta learn to say They make no. it to mine, <laughs> so I don't know why they can't make it to yours. Right. Yeah, so, so I'm I'm kind of in agreement. Relationships that work people are addressed. Yeah. The romantic relationships that work, I'm glad that's been addressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm a maybe I'm an island on the solicitation. No, I think, but I don't see a problem. Like yeah, that. I, 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 I I would agree. prefer not to have it in there, but I'm not going to die in that hill. Also, yeah. I just I'm not going to die in that hill with that one. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't think it's a recommendation from you guys too. Yeah, you're yeah. the ones in the office dealing with it. Yeah. So you don't yeah. have to do, give it right now. But we don't get a lot of solicitation. I I don't see it being a problem. Like you said, you know. And it would be the employee, not right. someone else. Right, so I don't think it's going to make or break anything one way or the no. other. So if we have it in there, then, then it does take some of the pressure off of, you know, we feel like we got to buy from our co or, you know, the co-worker's mm -hmm. kids. So uh, I, 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 I'm with you too. I think it can probably stay in there. Um, section three, here's a, they got a little thing up about weapons and there's another section that addresses it more. But basically they're saying, you know, in this one is, you know, things that could be termination. And one of them talks about weapons. And then like I said, later on it talks about, basically they're suggesting no weapons at all in city owned property, in the buildings, in vehicles. This, yeah, definitely needs to be a discussion because we're talking, you know, guys have pocket knives, I carry mace. I don't know, those weapons? <laughs> Anything, yeah. I mean, I look at that and... I mean, sometimes you'll have a shotgun in your truck because you were on duty. Yeah, like we live in South Dakota. Right. We live in a concealed carry, we actually open carry state, like, I, you know. I used to bring freaking shotgun to school, bring it in south and put it in my locker. Oh, you wouldn't. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll just get my opinion out there. This is not a reflection of my personal opinion or my views about concealed carry. Shucks. I think it's a terrible idea to allow weapons, maybe with some exceptions, into the workplace just because of liability and 50 million other reasons. So I would be more in favor of saying, with the exception of firearms and pocket knives or all-purpose tools with a blade less than a Yeah, I see now, but here's the thing. Down. Let's look back at what happened to Sue Steele. So Sue Steele, about four or five years ago, had a vendor that came in and shot at the workplace. And so, you know, like, we, we have to, the people that work, that are employees, you know, I think that by stripping away their constitutional right to defend themselves and to carry, and to, to, to carry a weapon, wherever they go, is you know I, I look at that like if I were to vote to get rid of that now I'm in I'm I, I'm convicted and I'm convinced that I am taking away one of their rights. But I respect what you're saying though too. I, I get that. I mean and you I'm, I'm not an attorney, but it says yeah. to the extent permitted by law, employees and their and visitors are prohibited from carrying weapons onto city premises. So I think to the extent permitted by law is what maybe means the interpretation. So if Tom could give us some hypotheticals on what that means. So, what, so by law, we're permitted to carry. You know, walk down the street with yeah. your AR if you choose to do that. Right. It's a little unnerving, but it's your right. So I that, just, that'd, be, um, that'd be clarification for you sure. You've got guys with the handgun in their back of their waist at the shop and accidentally shoot somebody at work or something else happens. I don't think that's a good scenario for the city. Or work comp playing at that point. My thoughts were... I know we're in a wacky world now, and yep. I've never carried one, you know, ever. You know, I've yeah. got them and everything like that. My okay. thought is, I would hate to see somebody, because I know somebody that worked with a school district at one time, had a gun in his trunk of his car and got fired for it. Right. That's where I'd hate to see. I'm not sure if Amy carries or not, if she's got one in her vehicle. My daughter carries a pistol in her vehicle all the time. Yep. Uh, I'd hate to see. We we are a family who does. Yeah. I don't think. <clears throat> I'd hate to see somebody lose their job because they had a shotgun or something like that. 100%. After the car. 100%. I don't disagree with that. No. Well, let's, they just have to be aware to the point about taking it to school. During hunting season, I wouldn't park on school property. 
Right. Yeah. 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 They just gotta keep it's it just all about being more conscious about where you're at. Or you can have it in your personal vehicle. Yeah, but 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 here's the thing. Yes, you can have it in your personal vehicle, but we don't need. I, I don't think we have to restrict them. If those guys, you know, if they if they want to pull their truck up in front of the city, now they're on city property. Now mm -hmm. the guy who's got a shotgun in there can be fired. Like, yeah, we all right. kind of yeah. Well, I don't yeah. think it says we have to fire them. I it, think it says maybe. It's yeah. I think it's prohibited, and I, I don't think it's a great idea to have some guy on a mower with his gun stuck in his <laughs> holster driving around town. I think it's perception, and I think it's work time and. There's I been, do a lot of things that I can't do at that, work. So there's been some times in our situations where if I don't feel comfortable, I get a hold of the deputy. Mm -hmm. so have, him, I, I, have him come over with me to a job. Okay, okay. So we call the deputy in the city hall. Concealed carry at nights, but I feel like within the workplace there's, and if they are allowed, then I think we should have some type of firearms training or emergency response or. You don't know the person that has it even has it legally. So just my again, my thoughts. I think I'll probably. I'm sure we can come to consensus on. I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't want it to prohibit them from carrying a pocket knife or pepper spray okay. or things of that nature. Yep. The guys may have tools that you know have a blade on it, a multi-purpose tool or something like that. We'll have one. Okay. Maybe yeah, I can talk. Once again, with Tom, maybe yeah. see if we can reward it a little Be a bit, and we can talk it over again. So that, that's why, yeah, I just wanted these discussions with. Um, let's see what's the next section. So drug and alcohol testing, that one. Um, it's got the same verbiage as we currently have. One thing I do want to talk about, and it's not in our current manual. I don't know if it needs to be in this one, but. Um, the drug and alcohol testing, just how often we do it. Because right now, we are doing it quarterly. And the guys are, they got CDLs, and that's required to do it quarterly, but they're part of a larger pool. They're in with a CDL pool, which has other towns and businesses. So they only get pulled for a drug test once a year, maybe twice a year, if we get unlucky or lucky, which, however you want to look at it. <laughs> um, but the office personnel in here, it is just us. And so we've got so few people. we got people that go two times, or sometimes, if you're really lucky, we've had people go three times and roll three times a year. Uh -huh. um, do we want to have the office going quarterly when yeah. we get the same? Absolutely. Why do we have to do it at all? I don't, yeah, I would rather you know, see it. We I, agree. I actually agree with you because, you know, and that's what I said, we yeah. only have for drug testing, obviously we do pre-employment, and pre if there's an accident, we do. <clears throat> But it says we can do yeah. random anytime when there's a suspicion. Yeah. I mean, so it's not like... We can save that money and use it on background. Yeah, we spend yeah. almost there we 90 go. bucks, I think, on it and whatnot. It's like a win-win. Um, we just thought it was a um, They're going to have to. <laughs> yeah. With the CDLs. CDLs. Yeah, but... Actually, Unless otherwise required. I mean, I don't know how many... I, we, Everybody in the office knows the people at Sanford very well. Because <laughs> we're there so often. You know? That's crazy. And, and I think that's stupid. We've never had a family. I've never once taken a drug test in my life. Yeah. In 37 years. <laughs> like I said, and it is in our marriage, which I think we keep or it in there. Cause we can pull them for a random if we're their suspicion. So, I mean, obviously we keep that in there if we make somebody Yeah, it's like for the not so random test. Yeah. I mean, or just you can leave it in there and we can choose to. Um, yeah, that's what I said. Do it one year or something. But yeah, so we're pre employed post accident as well and under suspicion. Yep. My, my bigger question would be I didn't see in here where they address you can be under the influence or you can be impaired. So if they have a medical marijuana card per right. se, mm -hmm. now that random drug test is going to come back that they are under the influence. Mm -hmm. But are they impaired? And so does that is that addressed in here? So when, when that got passed, I talked with our attorney about that. So it's going to be treated. So it's it's like a prescription mm -hmm. medication, just like if you were taking prescription painkillers and whatnot. As long as it doesn't impair your performance, mm -hmm. you're fine. But if you're taking it to the point that now your safety hazard or whatnot impairs, it, like I said, it's going to be treated just like any prescription okay. drug. Okay. Yeah. So the, we do have that address. Yep, we do have that address. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, we, we addressed that when this whole thing came about with the medical kind of a whatever. So, yeah. all right, 
use. So the consensus is we don't do any random on the office? Or, or, we, would be or we do it down to once a year? Try, I, I don't know what, what's my, the consensus. My suggestion. Uh, I don't think we I, need to do it for us. It's, it's my opinion. Required. I, I like the idea if somebody comes into the workplace and they're assembling all over or something, oh, if there's yeah. a, something that happens. That's language that you, you know, right. but I, I really so don't like, like yeah, submitting exactly. people right. to those things unless if there's a very valid yeah. reason. Well, yeah. and it takes away from the work day as well. I mean, we've got to send them into Sioux Falls. They've yeah. got to sit there and wait for, you know, to do the task. Right. And now, if they go on a vacation to Jamaica, I want this to go on a vacation to, to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Would you get back? There's random drug tests for everybody that attends. They're just not so bad. <laughs> I still tell that to people at work. No, we don't want them to end up. I know. So yeah. Um. No, I think I think our policy is solid. That was, yeah, it's, it's kind of a fringe hypothetical. All right, what else you got? The only thing was just we already had the weapons discussion, so what I think I'll do is some of these things, we'll try and reword them. I'll kind of talk with Tom a little bit, yep. maybe come back next month or something. If you guys, you know, look through the manual when you get time a little bit more, if you see anything else that you question about, you know, definitely shoot it to me so we can kind of look at it and, and we'll, we'll keep moving ahead with it, so. Thank you. Okay, that's all I have for that. All right. Thank you. All right, last stop under new business, review, approve recommendation for IT service. So, we have got nine quotes, and I've kind of broke them down to a spreadsheet for you. Um, all the items on the left are things that, services that I wanted to look forward to for IT to provide to us. Right now, we've got very, we had, I should say, very cheap IT services. Um, but we only had like nine of our computers covered. We didn't have this council once. He helped us with them, regardless they weren't on contract, whatnot. Um, we're not gonna have any other company to just do that now. Um, they though, they, we don't have any like 24 seven monitoring currently, which I think we should. With the world we live in now, this is beginning to be a big thing as all the smallware, spam, uh, I, I think we should be more proactive versus reactive. So I did want them to all have some kind of 24 seven monitoring in there. So we, we right now do, you know, offsite cloud backup that needs to continue. Um, basically, you know, we don't have any IT people here. So basically I need them to be able to, if there's an issue with any of our computers, be able to handle it, be able to help us with purchasing new hardware, software, be able to work with our third vendor um, <coughs> computer programs like our water or sewer billing program, our county. Anyway, so basically it's all encompassing. And like I said, I did a spreadsheet. I made sure if they wasn't specified in their quote to me, I called to make sure is this covered, is this not covered? So we were comparing apples to apples. And um, on the bottom in red, that's basically what it comes down per month cost to us. Um, advanced Tech was um, the cheapest. Um, I'm not familiar with their company. I did check their references. Um, they had good references, so I mean, you know, very comfortable with them. Um, the one though I am recommending is a and IT Solutions. They, they are, we have an established relationship with them and I do know what work they do. And we have all our print, we have our, our contract, we lease all our printers from them and our copier. So, you know, when there's an issue, I know how their service is, they come out right away, we have a good working relationship with them. So that one I am very familiar with. Um, when we were, when we got notice that um, our, our Sioux Falls Networks was not gonna be doing business, we need to change IT, I asked Monty, our provider, I said, who would you recommend? And he actually said, you know, if you got all your printers with A and B, he says, they're a good company. He says it would be a very easy transition just so you'd have it all under one umbrella. A lot of times you've got to have, you know, IT work done on your printers or copiers along with your computer. So he said it, it would make sense to do it. So that's just two cents worth in there. So um, like I said, that, I recommend it. It is, like I said, it's all going to be a substantial cost of what we're doing. One person get it done. Everything's taken care of. And with them as well. Right? And this price is not the printers. 
this is just no, no, deal. that's a whole separate contract that we are. But they did the drop the price when you called them. Yes, yes. So they were just like I put on my notes. They were, you know, going to charge an onboarding fee, but since we already have a contract with them, they dropped that, and then they did drop their monthly fee as well, just because of the partnership we already have with them. So I think they're showing they're definitely willing to work with us. So motion to approve contract with A and B IT Solutions for IT Services as presented. Second. And two seconds. So I got four. Chris. I think Chris got me there. Any other discussion? If not, we'll vote. Matson. Yes. Bossman. Yes. Peel. Yes. Oh. Yes. All right. Okay. That's all in the business. Move into executive session for economic development personnel. Yep. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all.